In this video, I'm gonna go over five mistakes I made in the beginning of my entrepreneurial journey that I think you should avoid. If you don't know who I am, my name is Cameron Tran. I own a cleaning company. It took me a lot of steps and different ideas and ventures to get to where I am, but now I own a successful cleaning company and hopefully we're gonna franchise it soon. But I'm here to entertain and to educate you and nothing more, so please like, subscribe, or help that algorithm out. Thank you. All right, so let's get right into it. Number one, uh, avoiding burnout, uh, especially in the beginning, and I still do this sometimes, so I struggle with this one myself, but working too hard sometimes, two days, some days, some days, when I wake up, I feel really good. I get really ambitious and I work 16 hours that day. And the problem with this is the next day afterwards, I feel like that burnout effect, which isn't always true. Sometimes I could do this for two or three days. But then on that fourth day, it's like, I just feel like I don't want to crash. I just want to sit on the couch and do nothing. I'm like ultra unproductive for a little while. And I realized that I have to cut myself off at a certain point. And I realized for me, you know, it's like seven or eight at night. I got to stop working. I got to lay down, relax for a little while. And if I do that, if I stop working when I still want to work, coming back to work, the next day is so easy and I could do this endless days in a row so it, it kind of sounds funny but you got to work really hard but work hard for like 10 hours but make sure that you are still taking time for yourself if you're gonna work eight nine ten hours just make sure they're really productive eight nine ten hours you can get so much done in that time and you don't need to over do it to yourself don't stress yourself out don't burn out so that's tip number one this is tip number two uh, put the right people in your corner. Basically hire the right employees. Um, the good employees are gonna take initiative and they take care of their problems themselves. Um, you know, in the beginning, it's kind of hard to figure out how to hire the right people. Um, but once you do and you figure that out, you realize the good employees, um, they will solve most of their issues for themselves. Of course, there's gonna be issues that they need you to help solve with, but little things, like if somebody's coming to you on a regular basis asking about the dumbest, little, smallest things, you got We want to avoid those people. Those people take your time, they take your energy, they force you to micromanage, and you want to avoid all that. So hire the right people. And I know this is hard, but you'll figure it out along the way who is the right people, how to interview the entire process. You will figure it out. Number three, in the beginning, I spent way too much time worrying about little things that don't matter and that don't push the needle forward. Worrying about things like web design and logo and what to name your company are all fairly important things at the end of the day, but they don't don't push the needle forward. You really want to start a successful business and build a business that you can live off of and sustain yourself with. You need to focus on things that push the needle forward. Um, there's something called the 80-20 rule. 20% of the work is basically important for 80% of everything else or 20% of the salesmen do 80% of the sales. Um, and you got to focus on the 20% of your business that pushes you forward. You should spend 80% of your time on that 20% of things. It's going to be things like marketing and sales, because if you are bringing in clients and you're getting the sales, then you're going to have a business and you're going to have a booming business because you're getting money coming through. If you're focusing on things that aren't bringing money in at the beginning, unfortunately, you're going to fail because at the end of the day, why are you in this business? You are in this business to make a profit. I understand that maybe it's your passion or whatever, but you can't sustain something that doesn't have a monetary value in the long run. So extend your time onto things that push the needle forward like sales and marketing and that will help you build your business faster and stronger i want to hop in here because i heard an amazing quote one time and it's really true especially to this step is that if you own a business and you're not doing sales and you're not doing marketing you're not doing outreach you are in a sinking ship your ship is no longer going up you are going down because if you stop doing these things, you are relying on your organic SEO and your word of mouth, you are going to fail. You have to go out and find the people yourself. You have to do the sales. This one's difficult, it's a psychological transition, um, which I think the more you understand about business and hard work and all this stuff, you realize a lot of it is just psychological. Um, but this one is difficult to understand because you have to charge clients on their budget and not yours. Um, say you are doing digital marketing services and you <laughs> think you could do it for somebody for a couple hundred dollars or so, say $200 and that would be your budget that you would pay somebody to do it for you. But the reality is, is this company does hundreds of thousands of dollars a month. So you need to charge on their budget and not yours. Now I'm not saying overcharge somebody just because they can afford it, but price your service or product accordingly to that person. Don't 
underbid yourself just because you wouldn't pay that much because someone out there will i promise you especially if your service or product is that good so just figure out that price that's right not too cheap not too expensive but on their budget and not yours what would they pay for something not what would you pay for something this one was also really hard for me in the beginning but understanding the actual value of a business plan at least for me i always had the, the goals wrote down and like the numbers and all that stuff and the dreams and i would have that all figured out but I hadn't actually organized the plan on how to get there. Now, a goal backed by a plan followed by action is, is attainable. Now, the same thing is kind of true with the business plan because you can say, yes, I want to make $100,000 a year, but what does that conceptually actually look like and how would you actually do it? Like, how would your business be formatted? How do you get your clients? How much do you market? Um, all of the little things like that, like employee retention, employee getting employees, all those things need to be wrote down and have systems in place. Then you have to understand how those are actually going to work. And once you do that, the other thing is, I mean, you just, you have to have that just to understand what's going to happen. But the other thing it does is it tricks you into realizing like how doable it is and like how conceptually you can picture it in your head now. So the action step for you to take after this video would be Google business plan template. And you can usually download these PDFs or just look at it and create a Google doc. Um, but just do a basic outline of a business plan. You don't need to get into crazy depth, but just start it out. And then once you start it out and you have the basic framework later in, you can come in and fill out the gaps and do this and you know conceptually it'll help you so much those are the five things that if i could go back i wish i knew so i hope these helped you at all and if they did please like and subscribe thank you all so much for watching have a wonderful day